All right, hello and welcome back to another video. And congratulations on the purchase of either your new espresso machine or simply your new bag of coffee, whatever it may be. But if you're watching this video, you're probably having a bit of trouble dialing in the perfect shot of espresso and might be a little bit frustrated having already poured countless shots down the drain. So what we're gonna do in this video is jump straight into a step-by-step -step instructional to get you pulling some at least drinkable shots. And after that very quick instructional, we'll then do a deep dive into how to turn that drinkable shot into a great shot of espresso. These instructions will apply to any espresso machine, but I'll also be giving a couple additional tips directed specifically at Breville owners. Espresso purists, please don't ream me out for this initial oversimplification in the step-by-step. -step. We'll get into the nitty gritty later on in the video. All right, let's get you running. The first thing we need to do is standardize your dose of coffee grinds. We'll be using a double shot basket and the correct dose for this is generally around 18 grams. Now, notice I'm referring to a weight in grams and not a grind dial setting. You will need a scale for this process. Please don't torture yourself and try and do it without one. They cost around 10 bucks. Amazon can have one on your doorstep in the next 24 hours. I'll link this one in the description below. So now that you have your scale, how do you get 18 grams directly into your portafilter? Well, you can grind directly into your portafilter and weigh that, trying to grind a little more and a little bit less, but this can tend to get a little bit messy and you end up wasting some beans. What I would recommend is emptying your hopper completely, grinding out whatever is stuck in the burrs, and then only putting 18 grams into your grinder at a time. This also helps improve freshness. So let's do that process now. Now that we've got our 18 gram dose, before dumping these in the hopper, let's quickly talk about grind setting. I have no way of knowing what beans you're using, how oily they are, how light the roast is, how dark the roast is. So for this process, we're gonna start right smack dab in the middle on a Breville machine. That's a grind setting of eight. If you have a different type of grinder, please just find some middle ground that is a good starting point. Once you have that adjusted, now you can dump in your beans. Next, I also recommend grinding into that same container. This allows you to kind of fluff up the beans and pour them in nice and evenly to your portafilter. But again, whatever your personal preference. Using an external flask like this also helps a bit with mess I find. Notice that I have this in the double shot setting at the maximum grind. We're just gonna run it through until there are no beans left. You'll hear it change pitch. There it is. And pressing the button again will stop that. Now we have our grinds in here and I can kind of fluff these up a bit like I was talking about before, which is very important. And we'll take our portafilter. It's also important to note that this machine has been heating up for about 15, 20 minutes, which is important for the consistency and extraction of the shot. Next, we'll do this little flip maneuver here you see a lot of people doing to get from that container into our pour filter. And you can see this is nice and fluffy. You don't get that same distribution if you go directly from the grinder, I find. Next, you should already know this, but if not, here's somebody telling you an even distribution and a consistent tamp are extremely important for consistency. In my opinion, there are three ways to go about doing this. You can use lots and lots of practice with a manual one like this, practicing to get that consistent pressure. You can use a calibrated one like this from Luxhouse, which stops every time at a certain pressure, or you can use a palm tamper, which stops when it hits this ridge every single time. I will link the Luxhouse one and this distributor palm tamper in the description below. It'll help avoid a lot of headaches if you're really, really new, trust me. So whatever your process is, tamp your puck. This one, of course, we're gonna use the little distributor first. Next, we're gonna put our scale underneath our brew spouts, install your portafilter. Zero our scale and get some kind of timer ready. What we're then gonna do is hit the program button to put the machine in manual mode. And we're gonna start the extraction using the double shot button. We will start our timer when the first drips go into the cup. And we're gonna stop both the extraction and our timer when we see 36 grams on the scale. Let's see what that looks like. There 
There we go. We're going to have to stop a little bit ahead of 36 grams to make sure that little overrun doesn't get us too, too high. I'm going to switch hands so I can do both at once here. All right, so that one was a little bit quick. Let me dive into that. Once you reach 36 grams in the cup, you're gonna take a look at your timer. If it took longer than 30 seconds to reach your 36 grams, adjust the grind coarser. Your shot probably looked a little something like this, if anything came out at all. If it took less than 20 seconds, you're gonna make your grind finer. This scenario probably looked a little something like this. Pull another shot, time it to 36 grams and repeat this process as necessary until you get in that 20 to 30 second zone, ideally even right in the middle at 25 seconds. A note about the pressure gauge on the Barista Express, many people shoot for the middle of this espresso range that Breville has marked on here. I've found the best shots get pulled at 12 o'clock, so straight up and down, or even further up the pressure gauge. So like I said, try to get that time right in the middle at 25 seconds if possible. But once you're able to achieve a 36 gram shot out of an 18 gram dose in between 20 to 30 seconds, you should now have some okay tasting espresso. If you weren't able to achieve this because the pressure was just too high no matter what the grind setting, try lowering the dose to 16 grams. If your shots ran a little too fast, no matter the grind setting, try increasing your dose to 22 grams. Different coffees can make a big difference. There's no right answer or recipe for every single coffee. My only suggestion is to go as fresh as possible, local roasteries are best, and buy in small bags so they don't sit around and go stale. I'm personally an offender of this. I've actually been criticized in some previous videos for pulling some stale looking shots. This is a shot from one of my previous videos that was using some slightly stale beans, I'll say. And this is a shot with some fresh crema rich beans. Nobody's perfect. Now that we have ourselves a decent tasting espresso, we can go into some more detail on how to pull a great espresso. Let's take some time and see how each of these variables impacts the taste of your final espresso shot. Circling back to our first parameter, let's talk a bit more about dose. The one thing you need to understand about dose is that it only really determines how much espresso you can make with a certain brew ratio. For example, if you want to be brewing at a typical 1 to 2 brew ratio, a dose of 16 grams will get you 32 grams of espresso out. A 20 gram dose will get you 40 grams of espresso out. The dose is really only limited by the portafilter itself. The larger the portafilter, the larger the shot you can probably manage to pull. You also don't want to go too low with the dose, as this will create too much space between the group head and the coffee puck, resulting in some pooling. All Breville's, other than the dual boiler and Oracle machines, use a slightly smaller 54mm port filter, meaning that if you want to play around with dose, I'd recommend not going too too much higher than 18 grams, while in fact slightly lower doses can actually be beneficial in terms of getting your grind into a more reasonable range. What's important in terms of dialing in is to pick an appropriate dose for your machine and keep this number fixed throughout the rest of the process. Now that we've locked in our dose, we'll move on to the second pillar of dialing in, which is yield. Yield in combination with dose creates what is often referred to as a brew ratio. How much coffee, the dose, to how much espresso, the yield, changes this ratio. And this plays with a balance of extraction and strength of the shot. What does this mean? As you pull a shot, you're continuously adding more water and therefore diluting or reducing the strength. But you are also simultaneously increasing how much coffee goodness you've pulled from the beans or the extraction. Obviously, there are limits to this. If you let a shot run for a whole minute, by the end, you would still be reducing the strength of the shot by pouring more and more water into the cup, but no longer getting any more extraction. The beans have nothing more to give. This chart helps to explain this. As you can see, as the extraction percentage gets higher, we move from left to right, the strength decreases at an ever increasing rate. So that means that there's some sort of sweet spot, and that sweet spot will depend entirely on your personal taste. Again, there's no one answer. A shorter ratio like a 1 to 1 will be very strong, but may taste sour or under extracted to some. 
a longer ratio, like a one to three, will be weaker, but some find that it is sweeter and more balanced. You have to experiment. I recommend starting at a one to two ratio as a standard midpoint and adjusting from there to your individual tastes. A good way to understand how the flavors change as a shot progresses is to do an exercise known as the salami shot. What you do is you switch to a different glass every five seconds as your shot runs. Let this shot run a little extra long, maybe 40 seconds, and this way you can taste your way through the glasses and understand which flavors are introduced at each stage of the extraction. In this way you can start to fine tune your palate to whether you like the flavors of a longer or a shorter shot. Finally, we come to the grind size, which impacts the shot time. This is the final pillar of dialing in espresso. Brew ratio had a very large impact on the overall shot flavor. So if brew ratio is our macro adjustment, time will be your final micro adjustment. The average espresso pull runs from 20 to 32 seconds, and that is a big range. Again, I recommend starting in the middle at 25 seconds to reach your desired yield, and then start adjusting grind size up and down from there to your personal tastes. When it comes to grind size, it helps to visualize how the water is running through the puck. A very coarse grind is like a box of pebbles. Water will pass through very quickly over the rocks and come out the other side looking pretty much the same. In coffee terms, the contact time will be too low. The resulting taste will be sour and unpleasant. At the other end of the spectrum, for a fine grind, we can visualize a box of fine sand. The water will seep through very slowly, and if the sand is too fine, it will actually start to pool on top. A shot that is too fine will often taste burnt and bitter because the contact time was too high, which either scorched the coffee or simply over-extracted it. As with anything, it's all about balance. You can pull a 1 to 2 ratio shot in 5 seconds, but it's not going to taste any good. If you take too long to reach your desired brew ratio, you will pass the ideal brew because you are getting little to no added extraction during the end part of your pull. Your job is to find the money zone for each of your coffees. So to summarize all of this, pick an appropriate dose for your portafilter size and shape and then leave it alone. Tamp consistently however you prefer to do this. Play with brew ratio to find what tastes best to you and then fine tune that final shot using the grind setting and shot time. I'll leave links to the tampers I mentioned earlier in the description below as well as this scale and these double walled shot glasses that everyone seems to ask about in all of my videos. As always, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you've made it this far and learned something, please feel free to leave a like and even subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.